And welcome back. It's time for the segment we call Off the Press. It's our quick review of news stories across the country uh, that we will, of course, be going through with our guest this morning, uh, public affairs commentator Gide Benson. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's an interesting Sunday, and of course, I feel that there's a few things that we might also be celebrating. It's, it seems, you know, like the numbers uh, with regards to COVID-19 are reducing. We might be flattening the curve finally. Finally. And uh, praying that there's no second wave, you know, like other countries have experienced. Indeed. I okay. pray so too. <laughs> I want us to quickly start with, um, I guess, the punch newspapers this morning and see what okay. we can quickly find over here. It says the Senate to bar FIRS, Customs and NBC and 57 others uh, from uh, getting allocation, I believe, uh, uh, in, uh, from next year's uh, budget. Um, yeah, federal allocations affected agencies to bear overheads and workers' salaries. Uh, the story was saying that um, you know these agencies, after the review, were seen to be making enough money to fund their overhead and to pay salaries, and so they will be barred from taking from the federal allocation next year. Helicopter crash. I've been barred from my house. Says a 77-year-old landlady. COVID-19. Over 10,000 citizens evacuated to Nigeria. Also, water bill, plan to take land for headsmen, says Governor or Tom of Benue State. Also, uh, most NDDC funds spent on elections, says uh, Miti, an ex nati chairman. It says most NDDC funds are spent on elections. Don't speak to Fulani, um, Apostle Kuri tells Buhari. Or don't speak for the Fulani, Apostle Kuri tells Buhari and politicians. Indiscipline money now, um, church leader, I'm not sure what that, is, that story is about. Um, indiscipline and money, now church leader's problems, I beg your pardon. Federal government and oil companies lose 87 billion naira to gas flaring. And also, um, how I jumped out of my burning car and escaped death. And that is talking about a broadcaster this morning. These are the major ones that will be taking on the punch. Um, there's so much, and I, I think, uh, uh, G.D. Benson, you can kick off whenever... You're ready. No, I think we should talk about um, the attempt by the Senate to stop the federal government from um, what providing allocation for some of these agencies. Yeah. Um, at the face level, it sounds good and nice, interesting, because these are revenue generating agencies. And at the end of the year or on a monthly or quarterly basis, they're supposed to um, give account of the monies that they've generated on behalf of the federal government. Um, but what also happens is many of them under declared for reasons that we know in discipline now so if the, if the senate is recommending to the executive arm of government that the allocations to them be stopped um, it's going to create a, an unimagined maybe unimagined problem which is that these agencies will now begin to think that since we're now having to um, bear overheads which yeah. is payment of salaries and other things there's there's a likelihood that there'll be gross on that declaration so they will draw more as a corporate entity. Um, there will be attempts to be less accountable to the federal government. Um, the attempt by the Senate should also be commended because um, it gives the it, it should give the executive arm of government the opportunity to be able to allocate to other agencies of government which have which have always cried that they are underfunded. Yeah. Um, but I hope that if these flies, which I doubt. Um, there, there should be tightening on, of the news of the news on all of these agencies that generate monies for the government. There should be more. There should be increased oversight and supervision of their activities. The customs generates a lot of money. Uh, the Department of Petroleum Resources, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, and what some of the other agencies that have been named. Yeah. So these are avenues well, for the. When do you think quickly? When do you think we would then have the conversation about blocking leakages um, with regards to government? Funds. When the government wants to do something, they can't do it. They're not ready to block the leakages just yet. Um, as long as, as long as there's still agencies that don't respect the directive by the president for the treasury single account, yeah. and no punishment is um, what issued to those agencies or the heads of those agencies, things like this will continue to happen. And there must also be a measure to ensure that all monies go through the banking system, the financial system, yeah. encourage e-payments. As a matter of fact, the part of the crisis that you have in some of these agencies is because a lot of these th things still require physical presence. 
if people could do things remotely, make payments through the banking system, the federal government will make a lot of mo a lot more money. I mean, they think we um, the customs is happy that it has declared more revenues in the last what three or four years. Ditto um, the joint admissions and matriculation, but but if they make it strictly strictly um, e payments e and through financial services, they'll yeah. realize that um, they're be they're barely scratching the surface at the moment. All right, one of the stories on the pond this morning, of course, uh, you heard about the uh, governor of Bainway State speaking yes. on the uh, water um, bill. Or yeah. he's, he calls it a plan to mm. take a land for headsmen. Yes, my concern about the the bill is that um, for a party, now I'm talking about the APC now, for a party that came into power with a manifesto that they were going to practice true federalism, this is um, going in reverse gear. This yeah. is going the other way. It's, this is another thing that is promoting a unitary system of governments. Amoteku is already on the table. The Southwest governors are already um, likely to go to court on account of that. And then wanting to control a lot of issues related to water, the waterfront infrastructure, the waterways, likely the boreholes as well. So it means that the federal government would have control over what is at my backyard. Again, this would this may have an adverse effect on the Land Use Act of 1978, which vests the control of land in each state in the federal in the state government. Yeah. So I, I hope that this is something that will re, that should be re, that will be reconsidered, and if not, um, I hope that they would have a day in court. Those who do not agree with it, I don't think it's a direction that we should be going at this time. Okay, um, I was uh, I'm having a conversation with you just before we kicked off. You yes. know about the. Uh, because it has passed second reading, so you know I was asked, uh, talking about uh, public hearings and how many Nigerians truly are involved in public hearings. Yes. Um, and you, do you feel that is a problem? Just before we move into the nation newspapers next, by the way. Oh yes. So do you indeed. think that's a problem that there's not, you know, a lot of information with regard to public hearings on these bills? I think it was here that I spoke about the docility of Nigerian voter and the Nigerian populace want. Um, and that's this is this is um, the docility is part of the reason why the government comes up with things like this, knowing that they can get away with this. Um, by the time the citizens realize that this is already in work in the works, it will probably be at the eleventh hour, and it may be too late, yeah. but to rescind the decision. So those who rage on Twitter um, need to be more alive. The political apathy needs to reduce. Political awareness needs to increase geometrically. Because what is happening is that people's future has been decided for them by people who are not going to be part of that future. Yeah. All right. The Nation newspaper is coming up uh, right next. It's a lead story there is talking about Lagos schools reopening on the 14th of uh, September as COVID cases decline. Also, anxiety in Kogia Supreme Court decides Bello's fate tomorrow. ICPC quizzes. NDDC directors over 5.4 billion naira fraud. It seems like a never-ending um, issue with the NDDC and, um, and their directors. Crash helicopters, Nigerians hail hero pilot for saving lives. Identifies um, of, uh, well, identities rather of a dead crew members revealed. Also, NCA and firm deny the chopper wasn't airworthy. Uh, someone who visits crash site promises to build a damaged structure. Amotek in Southwest uh, states insist on independent structure. And also, many Nigerian churches lack discipline, says Khan President. Sad story, another woman raped and killed in Ibadan. These are the major stories on the nation this morning. Okay, well, I mean, schools resumption is something to cheer about, um, particularly um, earlier we mentioned that the numbers appear to be reducing, so yeah. the curve is finally being flattened. So yes, um, it's good that we're taking this one step at a time. First of all, it was resumption for exiting students, i.e. those who are meant to write um, their final year exams. Yeah. I think that they, they made good progress with that if they, if they haven't finished. And now we're going to tertiary institutions. Now, which is, so maybe the Lagos State Polytechnic, Lagos State University, the College of Health, um, what again, College of Education and what have you. And if one would expect that um, the people who are what stakeholders in these institutions would act responsibly, wearing of masks, ensuring that they take necessary measures to stem the tide of protection so that yeah. they can carry on with their lives. Everybody has been affected by the lockdown 
brought about by COVID. And so about five months of our lives have been affected by all of this. So I imagine that everybody has at least lost one semester. So when they return to school, it's important that they act as responsible citizens because the people in the higher institutions are not children. Yeah. So by themselves, they should be able to take the necessary measures to, to prevent the spread. And I hope that the Lagos State Government would also ensure that um, necessary measures are being taken and anyone who violates the, the protocols in any of these institutions are properly sanctioned yeah. because we really need to get, to get back our lives. So it's quite commendable. All right, and um, quickly on the ICPC investigating NDDC directors. Uh, so, I mean, the first thing that came to my mind was a joke, which is that um, a lot of people have said that the problem of Nigeria is anything that has a C in it, whether it's the ICPC, the NTDC, the NDDC, the EFCC, the whatever Cs. Um, again, I think this is a smokescreen. Um, first of all, um, duplication of efforts is what I see that the ICPC does what the EFCC should be doing and the EFCC does what ICPC should be doing. Um, if the Stephen Oronsai report were yeah. to have been implemented, I think that many of these agencies would have ceased to exist uh, because it's the ICPC today. Tomorrow, the EFCC still has the powers to investigate what's happening in the what, NDDC. We saw the National Assembly carrying out its oversight function and we saw that the Pandora's, Pandora's box was open, and then we saw the fainting drama, which appeared to, which appeared to have brought that to an end. Doesn't the Nigerian Police Force also have its financial investigations unit? Well, ideally, actually, this it, uh, the uh, the EFCC is supposed to be okay. a part of the part of the um, EFC. The, the EFCC yes, is yeah. meant to be a part of the Nigerian Police because most of the people who have led the EFCC have been police officer. Police officers, um, Ibrahim Magu, Nuhu yeah. Badu, Mrs. Waziri, Lamorde, they were in what? I think they were in a special fraud unit of the police at some point, and they were on secondment to the EFCC. So um, I don't see much coming out of this. I, I've been one to um, entertain a lot of pessimism when um, agencies like this have been investigated. We never really get to the end. Again, going back to the issue of docility, there's a Freedom of Information Act which empowers a lot of people to be able to get to the roots of some of these things. You want to, well, if you want to know how far the investigations have gone, what the updates are, we should be able to um, do so using the platform of the Freedom of Information Bill. Yeah. But I think it's only the, the um, SERAP that does a lot of work in that aspect. The Guardian newspapers is what we're going to quickly look at next and see what uh, stories we can find over there. Remember, it's still off the press and uh, it's our quick review of news headlines across the country um, uh, this morning. Uh, we're joined by Jide Benson and uh, getting to share his views on these stories. On The Guardian, why Senate may remove DPR from 2021 budget. And also, Lagos Tertiary Institutions to reopen September 14th, says the governor. Metiala petitions El Rafai over breach of peace agreement. And a group wants uh, President Buhari to probe seeding of Bakasi Peninsula to Cameroon and others. Al Radi Rally Edo Royal Fathers to Secure Our People, says Ize Yamu. And um, Inquirer State uh, APC in Search of Peace. Um, one of, that's one of the stories uh, we can find on the. Um, Guardian this morning. Also, Kama will curtail illicit financial flow and corruption, says uh, Sislak. Um, these are the lead stories. Uh, of course, the wider Senate may yet remove uh, DPR from 2021 budget. The agency generates 5.4 trillion naira in three years. Stakeholders kick, say action may cripple regulator and also it will lead to multiple taxation and deviation from regulation. Um, we're, we're going to quickly just share on that one before we move to um, or the, the Tribune, I believe. I want to, I want to quickly get your thoughts on, um, from one of, one of the stories that says the agency makes uh, 5.4 trillion naira in, in um, three years. Shouldn't some of the funds that these agencies make, if properly, um, of course, if all these leakages are entirely blocked, shouldn't we be able to fund our budget by ourselves? You, you've answered the question. If the leakages are blocked, shouldn't we? I think we'll be able to fund the budget better, maybe not totally, and then there'll be need for less borrowing. But it's the system that we're in, it's the country that we're in, it's the people that run the systems that we're in. Yeah. Yes, and there's another part of the story that talks about um, the agencies being crippled. 
and it may create avenues for increased taxation of the people. I mean, that's a valid point because if the DPR knows that it's no longer getting allocations from the government or the customs of the FIRS, yeah. they'll look for other avenues to shore up their revenue. And there's no other way which is to um, increase the burden that the people already um, carry. Yeah. Um, for instance, the FIRS, there are issues of stamp duties as well. Um, I think about sometime last month, the new chairman said that um, there's going to be tax. There's going to be a tax that um, ten landlords would have to pay, um, effective what end of this year or next year or something. So several others like that would rear their spring heads. It there. would spring up from any of these agencies that will be affected. So it requires it requires a more detailed um, look. Um, before the Senate does take takes a decision on it, and then if if that were to be, the Senate may also consider that there may be no need for um, some of the Senate committees overseeing some of those spaces. Just saying. Interesting. And now on the Tribune this morning, uh, we're going to quickly rush through it. Uh, we're almost out of time. I want to see what we can find on the Tribune. Um, and get to also get your thoughts. Um, of course, the bill, water resources bill, is one of the stories that, that, ha that has also uh, crept up there um, on the Tribune this morning. It says, don't bill for trouble. Otto, Madibanjo, Bainway Group, Joy Youth, and others won the federal government and National Assembly over water resources bill. They claim the bill is another ruga ploy to uh, grab land for the Fulani. Query motive behind reintroduction, Assam Ben tax National Assembly. On the other elections, APC and PDP trade words over REC um, on you know in those state of three horse race to Alagbaka government house. NBA crisis southwest likely to follow the north. It says a cabal has hijacked the NBA balkanization imminent. Says uh, Falana. The country should split if the NBA must split. Says Williams. A lot of tough statements there. ICPC quizzes NDDC directors and others for spending 5.4 billion naira on COVID PPE. Confusion is two PDP chairmen emerge in AKT State and um, Oyo APC begins reconciliation as Alawa Akala brokers peace among warring groups. Uh, we have time for just two stories, I think, or maybe three. Okay, first of, all, first of all, I should commend the Tribune for the way they've, they've scripted the headlines. Don't bill for trouble. I mean, it's... Um what do you call it? Editorial liberty. Crazy. It gives us reasons to think. So kudos to the Tribune. Yeah. Um, so the I'd like to talk about the um, what's it now? Please remind me. I'm, I I lost my. Um, which of them now? Tertiary institutions. The no, NBA no. crisis. The NBA crisis. Yeah. Yes, the NBA crisis. Um, I don't I I don't envy Olumide Akpata at such a time as this. Um, first of all, it was the Elrufai drama. His name was mentioned and yeah. dragged. Um, not people not realizing that he's just president elect. Now he's having to um, inherit a crisis. It's a huge baggage that he's going to have to shoulder. Um, yes, people have always talked about the cabal in the in the NBA yeah. and being a young lawyer and having ridden, uh, risen to the presidency on the through the support of the young lawyers. Um, Bark, an MBA being balkanized at this time would mean that um, many of the things that were on his manifesto, he would not be able to focus on them. Yeah. He's going to be, what do you call it, chasing peace, um, calling for a truce amongst the old lawyers, the young lawyers, the senior advocates of Nigeria, and all of the respective groups in the body, whether it's Southwest Blocks or, or Northwest, whatever blocks there are. So I don't envy him, at that, and I hope that um, he has the courage of character and the strength yeah. to be able to weather the storms. Um, the APC in, in Oyo State, yes, um, I think that Alawa Akala is rising to the leadership position after the passage of um, Ajimobi, who was, what I, I think, the leader of the party in the state. Um, it's a commendable initiative that he's calling for truth so that the party can get its acts together. Um, finally, in Ekiti State, where they're having two, two PDP chairmen. And I think that's the same thing in, um, if, okay, no, APC in the choir is, is also calling for a truce because they've been at war for a while. But Ekiti State, um, the towering character and person of um, Ayodele Fayoshe has a role to play in the politics of Ekiti State. Um, don't forget that Mrs. Olujimi, who is the leader according yeah. to the party now because she's the highest ranking political office holder in the state. Um, Fire Shea sees her as 
a perpetual subordinate because he was the one that brought her from the House of Representatives to become um, deputy governor. It was while he was governor that she became a senator. Yeah. And so he believes that um, she is his um, beneficiary and he's a benefactor. But the tide has changed. And I think that that's, that's the thing that politicians need to realize. President Jonathan became vice president and later became president. And so his benefactor realized that his benefactor, um, DSP Alame Seha, yeah. realized that he look, my deputy is now a principal. He's now a man of his own. So I think that um, if that is the call, is that, is that that's the basis for the crisis in the Kitsi State government, in the Kitsi State PDP, and um, Farashi should be able to find the, what it called? It's a humble pie. Jida Benson, thank you so much for joining us this morning and sharing thank you your thoughts with us. Me. Thank you. And that's a wrap on The Breakfast. As always, your comments and observations are welcome via all our communication channels showing on your screen. We'll be back with more same time tomorrow here on PLOS TV Africa. Thank you for watching.